Welcome back to another SOZI tutorial. In this video, I'll be presenting some information from an infographic, and I want to either create a presentation or a video about this data. You can check out uh, the link in the description of this video to watch the uh, illustration of this infographic. This is artwork that I had UKR Art Design create for the channel. And it's just talking about bits, ones and zeros, and gigabits, and kilobytes, and terabytes, and all this stuff. Um, so this is the file in Inkscape. And so I can come in here and edit, and I want to show you a couple things. While this is opened, for example, if I want to change one of these ones and erase it and put an X in its place, I can just go File, Save, and then it automatically updates in Sozi, which is pretty cool. See that? So the X is now updated here in Sozi. This is Sozi. This is Inkscape. So the, uh, for editing the artwork, some people are a little bit confused on that, I think. Um, you can never add text in Sozi. You can never change the colors or add a background or anything. It's only working with existing artwork, and you have to use an external program like Inkscape to modify and create the artwork. But if I want to change a color down here, maybe if I want to, uh, I can ungroup these, Control-Shift-G. Oh, I always do that, Control-Shift-G, uh, Control-Shift-G again. I can change the color of this to a yellow color, and then go File, Save, and now that will update and be yellow here. If it doesn't update, you can always click this button, reload the SVG document, but the settings I have right now are set up to just automatically do it when it detects a change. But I like that the way it was. I'll do Control Z and go File, Save in Inkscape, and it will update here. Uh, so what I wanna do is just go through the process of turning this into an actual, an actual animated presentation. So I would probably wanna start at the top here, and I would say, um, computers store information so maybe I would scroll along this right here um, it's not ideal because I don't have much on the top there although I could just fix that real quick I'll come in here and I can just change this element right here and we just make this a little bit bigger here so that it's uh, extending past there we go save yeah and now we can uh, zoom in here Oh, and the other thing I want to change is changing the aspect ratio, which is the ratio of the width to height. And so we'll have it be 16 units wide by 9 units high. And that's sort of more traditional to a, the type of screen we're using. Perfect. So this is going to be my very first um, position that I'm showing the camera. You can call it a frame. You can call it a slide. So I just added that in there. And now I'm going to call this, I'll just keep it called new frame, and then I'll create a second frame, and the second one, while that's selected, is where we'll jump to. So from here, I can jump down to the rest of this information here. Maybe I'll just zoom out to the rest of this information. Uh, yeah, about like right there. That kind of cuts off that bottom part, but that's okay. Perfect, just like that. And then we'll add in this next part, and the next part here is gonna talk about uh, these things. So maybe I'll, maybe I'll come over down to kilobyte first. I'm not doing any rotation here, so it's fairly simple. I just keep adding, make sure the next one is selected, and then move to that point that I want it to look like. So then I'll add in this next one, and this part maybe we'll, we can create some sort of some bounces and jumps as we're going through here. So we'll give it a little bit more personality than this. But I'm just quickly going through to show you what this workflow would look like. Um, maybe we'll just stop it there, and for the final one, I'll just zoom out and show you the whole bottom part here. So we'll zoom out and just look at all of this here, and then we'll zoom out and uh, look at everything, or we'll just jump down to this bottom part. Okay, so that's kind of our whole thing. Now we can jump through and see what it looks like. We click on frame one, we'll see what frame two will look like. Three, then it goes to four, five, six, seven kind of zooms out here, and then we go to eight. And so maybe seven, maybe that's the part where we'll, we'll do something a little bit different. Maybe we'll zoom in and, and uh, we will we'll crop in to just this part here just to make things interesting and to use our new crop tool that we know how to use now. We'll crop in to maybe highlight as this as being like the, the big information thing that we want to highlight here. And then we'll uh, move this. Oh, actually we should have done that first. So we can we have to move our crop now. Perfect, just like that. So it's gonna be like this. And then it's going to come down and show just this bit of information, and then it's going to jump out to the rest of this. Okay, great. So now to change this up a little bit, um, let's come down here on this uh, new frame one, 
and we'll keep everything up here under the frame the same. But notice up here, um, we can show this. This button here says show in frame list. If I have it unchecked, then when we open up this in the web browser, it's not going to let us choose this frame from the list. When we click over on the side, I'll show you what that looks like. And then also this says show the frame number. So it'll say one in the top left hand corner when we're presenting if this is selected. If it's not selected, then it just won't show the frame number. So that's just some information you may or may not want to have included. Under the layer portion, um, we have some different options here. If we want to, I'm not going to do it here, but if we click, we can reset the geometry. So if I go back to frame one here, maybe I'll do it. We can reset the geometry and go back to how it was before and kind of clear all the, the camera positioning that we've done. And then we have to zoom into it and get back to it. Uh, we can also do undo. Let me get back into there real quick. So that's what that button does. And then this is if we want to clip in. Um, sometimes it'll clip in for you if you want to allow cropping like on this one. If we have this, this has to be checked now because we're doing cropping. So on this layer, we have to allow clipping. It does it by default, but just be aware that's what that does. If we wanted to turn it off and not show any crop, we could have that selected or not. Um, for the transition, I'm going to keep them all at one second, but we learned we can increase or decrease the size or the length that it does a transition. And then this, uh, the function that it does, linear just jumps, um, it keeps the, the speed the same, kind of going from one to the other. But if we change this, we can do this ease in, which is going to be a little bit different. So ease in sort of, it starts out a little bit slower and then starts speeding up faster. Um, we can also do this ease in and out. So if we do this on all of them, it kind of gives it a little bit more, it looks a little bit less, it kind of makes it look a little bit like it's springy a little bit. Does that make sense? And so just play with these different timing functions that we can do. Um, they kind of just do different things. And so this one like doesn't do, it just jumps to the end between these two. It just jumps from one to the other. And so we may want that, we may not. Um, and then the relative zoom we talked about in the last one, two. It's good. I like to do negatives. So even just like negative 50 um, on these are going to kind of give it that little jump in and out. So it kind of jumps out a little bit. In this case, we kind of see some of that white area. So that may not be the best one to do for here. Maybe we'll want to just go in a teeny tiny bit, like 10. So play around with those. And then notes is for the presenter. So on frame one, you can put some notes for yourself. You know, you can say, my name is and give yourself a cue. This isn't going to be displayed on the presentation, but there's a way that we can, um, I'll show you how we can see these notes. So these notes are for the presenter. You can write whatever kind of notes you want here to give your presentation. Oh, not ID path. Do that under notes. Uh, and then down here at the very bottom, these are the different ways we can let the people control. So we can say, if we click the mouse, do we want to advance to the next slide? If this is checked, if it's a, a blue color, a darker color, then it will do that. And then also using the keyboard. So they can press keys on the keyboard uh, to advance around. Um, do we want to allow them to move the camera? This is if they left click while in the web browser, they can actually move the camera to a different point. So if someone has a question, I'll just show you what that looks like here. We'll minimize all this. We'll go into this project. And it's this HTML document right here. So if we left click, we can actually move around within here and just go to any part that we want. Or we can click once and it will do our actual presentation that we wanted. So because we have that option uh, right here to allow move camera, it lets us do that. If we didn't have that checked, we wouldn't be able to move the camera around. And then allow to rotate camera, it does let us do this too. I forget what the key to do that is. Um, to tell us here. It doesn't tell me in here, but there is a way we can rotate the camera, and I forget exactly, is it? Oh, there it is. So you, you hold the shift key, and then you can actually rotate the camera around in your presentation. You can scroll wheel in and out. So we're in the web browser right now, not in Sozi software. So you can actually hold down shift and use the scroll wheel, or hold down shift and left click, and you can uh, rotate around here as well. And then when you click, it just jumps to the next part of your presentation. So all kinds of options there, but again, that's only if you allow the presenter to do that. And then allow zoom is scroll wheel in and out as well. And then this part at the top here I was telling you about, show in frame list, that is this part right here, where 
uh, if they click up here, it shows all the different frames and they can jump to it very quickly. But you can omit certain frames from showing up in here. And you can also keep this this number in the corner from even displaying altogether. So right now it says seven, but we could have that one be, we could change that so that it's not displayed. We would just go to seven and say, don't display it, don't show it in the frame list. And then we save that. And then when we go back, we just have to refresh this page by going to it. Oh. I guess, uh, oh, well now that we did that, we need to change this a little bit because it actually changed the address of that, the location. So now we just reload the page and it'll show that when we get to seven, um, we're not gonna be able to see it in there. It goes one, two, three, four, five, six, and then jumps to eight. We can still go to slide seven, but it's gonna not show anything. It's not gonna show the slide number and it's not gonna show it in the list that we can choose from until we get back to that list. So those are some of the options and that's how you might go about doing this. And then I mentioned in the last video, you can record this, you can screen record. There's a couple different options actually for recording within the web browser, but you could just screen record using something like a screen recorder, like open broadcaster software to just record what's happening here. And then you could add voiceover to that either live while you're doing the presentation or you could add it after the fact. So there's some good options there if you wanted to, con to convert this into a video and not a presentation, um, there's options to do that as well. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Go ahead and leave your questions and comments below uh, if you have any. Did I mention that you can see the artwork of this being created? I'll include the link in the description of the video so you can actually watch this being drawn in uh, if you're curious about how this was created in Inkscape. Um, I'll include that uh, video tutorial as well. But as always, thank you so much for watching, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.